So this is gonna be somewhat of a response video to many questions I get along the lines of what's better, say a electronic smart gym like this, Speedience Gym Monster, or something that is low budget, still versatile, such as a lever gym. Now this isn't gonna be a direct comparison between these two specific machines, more so I'm gonna talk about some of the pros and cons, some advantages. I will give some honest updates personally comparing these things about the lever gym and the gym monster to each other, but really if you're just on the fence about say supplementing or adding something else to your equipment, say you already have some free weights, a squat rack and a barbell, now you wanna say get like some sort of a cable based machine, which I would say these things kind of do that, or just some other versatility in your gym and you're considering again, higher price tag, electronic smart e-gym like this, or something that has more plate loaded like this. So that's what I'm gonna try and do in this video. These are just my initial kind of thoughts based on these two products because I assume most people probably are not gonna pick up both of these types of equipment. You certainly could. They have their pros and cons and advantages to each other. But I think most likely you're gonna have some free weights, barbell dumbbells, et cetera, and then maybe you might pick up one of these machines. Um, with the other exception, maybe being like a cable crossover, a cable machine, but I would say this is kind of in that same realm. So that's what I'm gonna get into. I will link everything seen in this video down below if you guys wanna help support me and the channel. Also, I'll just say stay tuned in the very near future. You're gonna see something along these lines of these machines coming up in a new review uh, that also might have your brain spinning of some other, another potential option that you guys might wanna add. So I'll just leave it at that. So first getting into the Speedience Gym Monster. Personally, I really only use this thing for about two to three exercises. I know it does not justify a high price tag for most people, but I have other things that I'm messing around with. Again, you guys know I review and use other things. But with that being said, it makes me kind of think about practically when and how someone might implement and use this in a general workout, workout program, especially if you're using other things and this isn't your own standalone device. I don't use any of the follow along workouts. I've said that in many videos. I just pretty much go to free lift mode and just start doing the exercises. Oftentimes, I'm in the middle of a workout and what tends to happen is I pretty much am just going to these stations, either the rope station doing abdominal crunches tricep press downs, uh, even bicep curls. I've kind of gone away from that to, in favor of other things that I kind of have here. I do like doing things like bench pressing, using something like this ring. The only problem, like I've said before, honestly, it's my own personal feedback. One of the downsides of e-gym, smart gyms, I just don't really like that. I've been trying to go in a little more to failure. If you guys have following the channel, you guys know that. And I just don't feel very comfortable giving my all and then relying on this thing to kind of turn it off at say at the top or bottom of position. So that's kind of one potential downside. Of course, what comes up and one of the downsides of something like this is the 220 max weight limit. I don't think that's a big deal. My go-to answer for most people is that if you're gonna use whatever exercises you're gonna do in excess heavier loads of that 220, I would say then just use yeah, like a squat rack and some dumbbells would be better than something like this. So. Not really a game breaker for me because pretty, predominantly the stuff I'm using on here are those auxiliary, probably assistance based exercises. And I would say again, for most people, even for like upper body exercises, that 220 load is probably adequate enough for most people. Also, just as a quick aside, you can see here that little wobble of the barbell going back and forth. That can happen from time to time in the speedians just because of the spool has to kind of get reset. So that's also a minor annoyance I wanna highlight here. And so while I have other things at my disposal, I have a cable rack set up with my squat rack that I could use. And of course there's cables here at the leveraging, which I'll get to. I go to this thing because it's just so easy. I'll often just kind of turn it off mid-workout and I turn it on, it takes about you know two minutes to kind of boot up and it'll pick up where I left off and I just continue that same set. I like it because it's just very easy to obviously to change the weights you know, on the fly. That's probably the biggest thing, just total uh, just ease and comfort. That's probably the biggest thing. I'd say overall the cable tension does feel pretty good. And then comparing it to something like this, an inexpensive plate loaded machine that is extremely very versatile. This was some initially I got, I loved it. Wasn't using it a whole lot to be honest with you because of other things again. And then I jumped back into using it very often. So for me, the go-tos for this exercise machine is gonna be this top cable just for things like lat pull downs. So I have a center pull down cable here. That's something that you don't get with some of these e-gym setups. You don't have that nice vertical uh, straight cabling system. There is a bottom cable there. I honestly don't use that that much. So I've been doing things like pull downs with loaded weights on the back. And the other two exercises I pretty much do on this thing are gonna be some sort of a bench press. Again, kind of more or less kind of go into failure. I like the fact that you can isolate these arms and if you kind of can't go anymore further, you get the failure, you, you can safely rest it on this other pin. That, I also love the overhead shoulder presses. 
And another big one that I would say I, I definitely like more on this thing than this would be the various leg exercises. So squats, lunges feel excellent on this machine. So that kind of covers the basis of this. And I will just say the pros and cons and the feedback of this versus something like an e-gym is that I'm not messing around with going into like various specific smaller weights. So if I didn't have this machine, and let's say I'm gonna do tricep press downs or cable, cable curls, I pretty much would just throw a random weight in there. I'm not gonna to fiddle too much with like one or two or five pound increments versus on here. I can certainly play with that and of course log it. And then when you get into something like this that is in this inexpensive market, it'll probably last you a long time, but this thing has its weak points. So just as a little update in this, there's kind of a little bend here, a little give. So if I were to press up on this, you'll see it kind of moves. And then if I was gonna do some sort of a pull up, I don't know if you can see that there's a little kind of a pull down shift here. I'll give you guys a close up, but there is some, this is kind of an, a little of a, a crease and a bend in this lever gym that I don't think over time is really a big deal, but I'm actually not taking advantage of this as much as I thought I was for pull ups and dips because I just feel like this machine possibly can't handle it over a long period of time. And then aside from that, some of the benefits of some machines like this is again, the crazy creativity and versatility that you can do. So I can strap resistance bands to the bottom pegs up to here. I made a whole video talking about this is kind of like the new, the biggest kind of like hybrid machine you could do because you could put weights and resistance bands and load it up all sorts of different ways and various exercises, kind of like a new solo flex. So I can drop that video down below if you guys are curious about that. Hopefully that was somewhat beneficial and answered some of the questions I was getting from many of you comparing uh, specifically these two models, but again, just an electric gym versus a plate loaded machine. And as a mini teaser, like I said at the, at the start, one of these things is gonna go to make way for some other room. I'm not gonna totally get rid of it, but you're gonna see really cool product in your future that is in the same realm of this equipment. So stay tuned for that. Any questions, comments, feedback, uh, anything I didn't answer in this video, definitely let me know. I'll be happy to share it with you. Of course, you guys drop down what you guys find is helpful for you based on your equipment, some other things to kind of consider. If you have some of these machines, definitely let other people know those other personal pros and cons, what you're seeing through long-term use, and that's always beneficial to everybody. So I'll see you guys on the next video.